Hi, I'm Rob. I'm ready to start and I'm back with a video. Yes, a full-length video. Uh, one of this year's twice annual favorites, fashion favorites. I think I've picked up some really cool stuff in the past six months or so, so let's take a look at it. The first item is this Ironheart pair of jeans, pair of 634s in the 16 ounce slub. This was new to the fall, and when I felt this texture, I had to get my hands on a pair. This cut is Ironheart's original silhouette, the 634, 634 in old Japanese, sounds like Musashi, which um, Musashi was a legendary Japanese warrior. I was in the market for a pair of blue jeans. There was really only one pair that I had that I wore and I wanted to get a real nice quality pair. As far as the details go, it's all classic Ironheart. You got the back pocket design and the red stitching, but the fabric is really something special. This is something they just developed. This is super slubby, a lot of texture to it, and it fades relatively quick. From my experience at least, I've only had these for a couple months. I've taken a couple spills in them and it's already electric blue in some places, which is cool. This has immediately become my new go-to pair of jeans. It's a classic, just straight cut, which I was a little concerned about because I'm used to more of a taper. But as soon as I got used to it and stopped staring at the giant cuff, I started wearing these jeans every day. Uh, I might get them hemmed eventually, but for now, I'm just letting it ride natural. Got two more pairs of pants to show you. The first is this Free Note Cloth Rios Fit. 14 and a quarter ounce denim. The fabric, the stitching, the patch, everything is all black. This is a sleek pair of jeans in their slim straight cut. The fit of these is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum of the iron hearts, but you need a little range in the wardrobe. I've washed these once so far, and yeah, they've immediately become a go-to pair of pants for me. Uh, this is the third video in a row, actually, that Freenote is featured in one way or another. So, gotta be doing something right. And the last pair of pants today are these Carhartt double knee pants. I actually got these a little while ago, but I just started wearing them. Um, it's a stretch canvas, but it's real thick and got all the extra pockets and everything. These are my pants that I'm really not too worried about getting dirty, not too worried about how many times I wash them. Um, really just down a roll in the dirt. Moving right on to the tops, I have this 316 shirt, jacquard pattern. I really love the fit of that on me. I got an XL, so it's a little bit bigger, but that's kind of how I like that to fit. The texture's really unique. It's kind of like a floral vine pattern, but if you just look at it from afar, it just looks like a solid black shirt. I'm definitely a fan of subtle details like this, especially in such a high quality garment. The other top for today is this East Log hoodie. If you're familiar with East Log, they're a Korean company. They do a lot of like avant-garde. This hoodie's just got this big pocket on the front and the neck kind of goes all around the face. The design for this was actually based on a military parka from the British military, I believe. I think it was like a hazmat parka, so it's kind of like a cool history to it. Uh, this is a large, it just fits a little bit big. As far as other cool clothing things going on, I got to tour the Shot Factory in New Jersey, which was really cool. Um, they make all of their leather jackets and everything by hand. They have for more than 100 years, and it was really just awesome to go into the space and see the process of a piece of clothing made from start to finish. And leather jackets kind of have that same vibe to raw denim. It starts as something that's real stiff and you got to break in, but eventually you really get a story out of it and it gives the garment a lot of character. Something I see is similar to raw denim and leather jackets. Some people disagree with me. Uh, but the same type of thing where it starts as a blank canvas and you put your work into it uh, is white sneakers. I recently bought my first pair of shoes on release since high school. The Jordan 6 Navy, I think it's called. I successfully bought these on the sneakers app, entered a drawing. It was the first drawing I had ever entered on the sneakers app and I got them. This was a pair of shoes that I couldn't pass on. I ended up getting these as a graduation gift for myself. You can really tell that the leather on these is nice quality. The whole build feels very sturdy and like it's going to last. Um, I know Jordans and Nikes in general are kind of hit or miss, but this really seems like a good pair. I am glad that I got these and not the Green Bean 5s that I was waiting on for about a year. Got to give a big shout out to Nightwing2303, Wear Testers, Chris from Wear Testers now. This top piece right there, you can un snap it. He reviewed these and I saw just how nice they were 
and I decided to go for these and if you got to see the green beans in person or from like a third party camera they didn't look great um, the Nike pictures look good though but it has this really weird tin foily look to it and I don't like it another pair of shoes that have become a staple in the rotation for me are these Puma uh, Balenciaga copies <laughs> I never thought I'd own a pair of like the real chunky sole shoes like this but I think Puma did it really well I actually like a lot of what Puma's been doing recently uh, I've got to thank my guy Max for hooking me up with them he outgrew them, handed them off to me, and I think I've already gotten more wear out of them than he did initially. Another pair of shoes is those Great Hikers that I reviewed a couple months ago. Been really been loving them as well. And accessories. I teased this in two prior videos. I got the cold cap back with the patches sewn on. I'm not going to put this on, it's way too hot right now. But got the chenille patch attached and little Boy Scout merit badge in the back. This is obviously not a summer favorite, but it'll be a winter favorite for years to come. That's it for the main clothing items today. I want to update you on some cool stuff. I am in the process of turning Ready to Start into more than just a YouTube channel. Now don't worry, I am still going to be making YouTube videos, but I'm also going to turn Ready to Start into more of a multimedia creative space. If you saw the teaser video last month, overall the idea is that Ready to Start can be a platform to release videos and music through, but it's also going to be a place to share videos, music, art, clothing, anything cool that other creative people are putting out as well. I've got some music in the works myself as well. I've got a short album that's going to come out in the fall and that's going to release through Ready to Start. So I'm going to try to make it a whole website where you can find everything self-contained but it can also link you out to YouTube and out to streaming platforms. Aside from all that, I'm going to be moving out of this apartment next month. So this is probably the last video that you'll see in this space. I really love living here. I've made a lot in here and I've worked pretty hard, but also slacked off a lot. Um, but it's gonna be cool to move out of this space and see what's next for me. Another update, I guess, is Willow is just about a year old now. Willow, come here. That's my girl. That's my girl. Ugh. I'm puppy sitting right now, so you can see she does not like to sit on my lap, but Willow's gotten big, and we're having a good time. Thank you. So I'll show you some t-shirts that I picked up as well. Got this raw denim. This is a City Workshop original here, obviously based on Run DMC. Uh, my days with City Workshop, at least as an employee, have come to an end. I'm moving out of town, so I had to retire from the shop, but really loved my three and a half years there. Roger and Josephine have been awesome. If you're in Jersey, if you're in North Jersey or New York or wherever, please check out City Workshop. They're amazing. Another t-shirt that'll bring us right into music is this. This shirt is from Fury and Few. It's a really cool band that Morgan's band, The Moment Dies, played with. It's a drummer and a guitar player slash singer, and they make so much noise in, in the best way possible. Uh, check out Fury and Few. They got a lot of uh, music projects out right now, and they're killing it. Another musical t-shirt I've got is this Injury Reserve concert tour merch. I went and saw the band tour there by the time I get to Phoenix album, which is insane, especially as a live performance. It was really like the album was made to be that type of immersive experience. They got a lot of underrated hits out, but this last album kind of went in a totally different direction, and it's really cool. I actually love the concert so much, I got tickets to see them play with Idols as well. Um, I had never listened to Idols before, they're like British post-punk. Um, it turns out I love their music too, so check them out. But I just kind of bought tickets blindly just to see Injury Reserve again, and now I'm going to a really cool show that basically has two headliners for me. I think three music recommendations kind of suffices for media for this video. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Henry Hablack, Keith from Seven Swords, and Brian the Aphotic. Got some really cool tattoos from them in the past few months as well. And Henry has been killing it with the merch. This is a Henry Hablack shirt, daggers on the sleeves. Check out some of his artwork, t-shirts, original art. 
that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sticking with me. Got some really cool stuff planned this year. So stay along for the ride and I'll see you in the next one.